watching the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, March 4th, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, as the arrogance of Washington set the stage for war, then gun grabbers unite to suppress the First Amendment. And how much does the CIA really know about drug smuggling? That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. It's like moths to flame. The worse it is, the more they're for it. The more degenerate, the more they're for it. The more absolutely mindless, the more they're for it. Well, not content with just taking your guns, Mothers Demand Action and Bloomberg's Mayors Against Illegal Guns now want to ban you from even talking about guns. They've been pressuring Facebook to further restrict firearm discussions on its various fan pages. And they also produced a video that was meant to shame Facebook for allowing its members to post pictures of and privately sell guns, which, of course, is not illegal. So, you know, all this is definitely going to lead to an outright censorship of gun topics throughout the social media site. And, of course, Facebook... They've, they've got a long history of censoring pro-liberty statements. They've banned users who promote basic human freedoms. They took off the little boy who was at the Monsanto march. They de de deactivated the Facebook page of a Pennsylvania gun store after the store owner announced that he was going to raffle off an AR-15. Facebook suspended at least 20 accounts that were operated by alternative media individuals during a 24-hour period. They claimed that they violated Facebook policies. They banned an image that contained a quote by Mahatma Gandhi that was explaining how the British disarmed the population during their rule in India. And the social media giant even, even went so far to delete Alex Jones' page over an image of the Gadsden flag in 2010. So these are just, these are not isolated incidents. Facebook routinely censors any political posts claiming that they violated their statements of rights and responsibilities. But this is in such violation of everything America stands for, the freedom of speech, the Constitution. It is time, if you were you know, going back and forth of whether or not it was time to delete your Facebook account, now is the time. I mean, Facebook has led the charge to build this panopticon. They've been building your facial recognition database and helping the police state and selling your information to the NSA, if not just handing it over the, to them outright. It's time to go in droves and people are already leaving Facebook by the millions. They're losing the youth and that's why Facebook is now, they've bought up a drone company so they can send 11,000 drones to Africa to bring the internet to two-thirds of the, the world that still can't connect to their little stupid social media account. But basically, Facebook doesn't care about bringing the internet to Africa and the other two-thirds of the world that do not have access to Facebook. They are trying to get the jump on setting up the infrastructure to go ahead and put the control grid in those areas as well. Facebook is like the head of the panopticon at this point. Not just here in the United States, but all over the world, the statistics are overwhelmingly clear. More guns means less crime. That's why the head of Interpol recently came out and said the answer to stopping Muslim extremists and others taking hostages at public places is to arm the general public. And the numbers show that states that have higher gun ownership have lower crime rates. While areas like Chicago, New York, and D.C. that have restricted guns or banned guns have the highest crime rates in the country. Mexico has a total abolition on their citizens owning firearms, and they have the highest crime rate in the world and more than 60,000 dead citizens. The criminals have no trouble getting guns. The reason the power structure wants to take guns is they want a monopoly of power. A disarmed population cannot resist an authoritarian government. Now, I know you know that, but for people out there that are new viewers and are anti-gun because they've been believing the propaganda, let me explain something to you. When they take the right to keep and bear arms, they invariably throughout history take all the other rights. And now Mayor Bloomberg, spending hundreds of millions of his own money in the last five years with his different organizations, like Mayors Against Illegal Guns, is openly moving with other anti-gun groups and bragging that they're very close 
to Facebook and others not allowing pro-gun, pro-Second Amendment websites. This is outrageous. The story is up on Infowars.com. Bloomberg moves to ban pro-gun free speech is up on Infowars.com right now. And it's been said the Second Amendment is the amendment that defends all the others. And I agree with that. But the First Amendment is its twin. It's the other amendment that defends all the others as well. They all defend each other, but nothing like the First and Second Amendment. Think about it. Bloomberg openly going out against the First Amendment. We've seen his counterpart, the governor uh, of New York, saying if you're pro-life or pro-gun, get out of the state. That's not inclusive. That's not tolerant. Uh, that is prejudicial against those of us that don't want to be slaves. Then you look at Cuomo and Bloomberg and Michael Moore and the Feinstein and, and Obama. They've all got bodyguards. They go to private schools, their children do, where they have armed bodyguards. But they don't want us armed to protect ourselves because they want a monopoly of force over us, their would-be slaves. This is so outrageous, I can't even think of words to describe the magnitude of how serious this is. We should all be outraged. And I know you're outraged. So go to our main Facebook page. That's the main place to protest and get our article. Copy it to your page. Give it to others. Media organizations, even if you're not pro-gun, you should be pro-First Amendment. Let's defend the First Amendment from Bloomberg and uh, others, Moms Demand Action, who are now trying to silence their critics. Look at how Piers Morgan destroyed himself in the ratings being anti-gun a foreigner lecturing Americans down his nose. Look at how everything the system pushes is falling apart. MSNBC, you name it. And that's what tyrants always do when their propaganda fails. They move to silence those who they can't compete with in the arena of ideas. We have a chance to turn this country and the world around. People all over the world hunger for a right to defend themselves. That's why I don't deserve your thanks. I need you to stand beside me in defense of the entire Bill of Rights, the entire Constitution, and all basic human liberty. Never forget, you're important. You have power. They're scared of you. That's why they tell you you don't have power. If you are watching this transmission, my friends, you are the resistance. If you're awake and outraged about what's happening, you are the resistance. And it's time to speak out against these tyrants and call them out for what they are, a bunch of authoritarians trying to exterminate all of our basic liberties. Well, in its ongoing battle for hegemony, the U.S. is now threatening Russia with sanctions in retaliation for the intervention in Crimea. The Russian government says that if the U.S. does impose these sanctions, it may not repay the loans that are owed to the financial cartel. A Kremlin economist said that indeed, sanctions are a double-edged weapon. And if the U.S. chooses to freeze our assets, then our equities and liabilities and dollars will also be frozen. So this means that our banks and businesses will not return the loans to American partners. Additionally, Russia would likely dump the dollar to reduce its dependence on the U.S. financial system and switch to other currencies. But in addition to battering the banking system, Russia could have the ability to inflict serious economic damage on Europe because it's a major supplier of their oil. Sanctions imposed by the U.S. are going to need the support of Britain and Europe. Otherwise, there's not going to be much change in behavior from Moscow. But it looks like for now that the U.K. is only going to be supporting visa restrictions and travel bans. Now, the U.S. is considering sanctions for Russia, Meanwhile, they're considering giving generous loans for the coup regime in Kiev that overthrew the elected government in Ukraine. What a mess we have gotten ourselves into. And of course, I say we, but you know, it's the, the hubris and those in, ch in charge. But it is because of this hubris, this arrogance and evil in the government on all sides, the stage for war has been set while the citizens of these countries are just suffering under this. The puppet politicians who Washington had intended to put in charge of the Ukraine, they've lost control now to organize and armed neo-Nazis. Of course, Washington just wants missile bases in the Ukraine in order to degrade Russia's nuclear deterrent thus reducing Russia's ability to resist U.S. hegemony. There are only three countries who stand in the way of Washington's hegemony over the world. That is Russia, China, and Iran. Now, recently, the U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry had the audacity to denounce Russia for violating international law by invading Ukraine. 
But does Kerry really think that the irony is lost on all of us, that he is the foreign minister of a country that has illegally invaded Iraq, Afghanistan, Somalia. He organized the overthrow of the government in Libya, tried to overthrow the government in Syria. They're attacking populations in Pakistan and Yemen with drones and missiles, constantly threatening other countries with attack if they don't go along. I mean, the Russian government noted that Kerry has raised hypocrisy to a whole new level. Indeed. And this is this is Washington, though. They, they, they lied about the nukes in Iran. They lied about weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. They lied about the Syrian president, Assad, sending out the, the chemical weapons. They've lied about Afghanistan, Libya, NSA spying, torture. What haven't they lied about? But that is that American exceptionalism that <laughs> we were told about recently. But in a move that is sure to exacerbate the notion even further that our government doesn't respect us, doesn't represent us, they're continually being less and less responsive to we the people and constantly attacking the Constitution and how things work here, how laws are put in place, the city of Houston has now issued a cease and desist order to prevent citizens from emailing them requesting that they allow a company to start business in Houston. Um, this company had asked its users to lobby the representatives to allow Uber, which is a mobile phone enabled taxi ordering service into the city. Now this was here to counter what they assumed would be the city bowing to the demands of taxi and limo companies who would be threatened by their business. And I mean, just speaking from experience here in Austin, I know that the taxis would definitely feel threatened and they are in collusion there with the police and the government because that's what helps keep our DUIs on the rise. So the company had asked people and asked the users to encourage emailing their city officials and allow the business to come into the city. But there was such an influx of emails that the police department sent a cease and desist order saying that the excessive number of emails has gone unabated to the point of becoming harassing in nature and arguably unlawful. So now citizens contacting their own elected officials is a form of harassment and somehow illegal. Therefore, if those of us who are going to flood our, uh, our representatives with demands to label GMOs or get the fluoride out of the water, now we are seeing as harassing and we're illegal. Meanwhile, hello, that's American. And now we're being labeled as anti-American because we're questioning these questionable laws, much like a group in Connecticut who is now calling on the government there to either enforce this gun confiscation law or repeal it in full. Now, following the Sandy Hook shooting in December, Connecticut passed a law which banned ammo rounds that could carry more than uh, 10, I'm sorry, ammo magazines that could carry more than 10 rounds. And any residents who had acquired such magazines before the law came into effect were mandated to register them with state police by the first of the year. Well, weeks after the deadline had expired, the authorities there had revealed that a very small, very small minority of people had actually registered their weapons and their magazines. So now the Second Amendment organization, Connecticut Carry, is calling on authorities to enforce the tyranny they passed or repeal it entirely, hoping that, you know, calling the state's bluff, they're going to be setting the stage for a showdown that could sink this draconian law and set the precedent for the rest of the country. Now, get this. One woman called and asked a Connecticut state police spokesman if police would be engaging in this door-to-door -door gun confiscation as they said that they would. Um, during this phone call, she was labeled anti-American. She said, I want to know if it comes down to it. Will the police go to my home if my husband refuses to give up a weapon that was formerly legal and now it's been made illegal by a corrupt legislature? And he said, ma'am, it sounds like you're anti-American. It sounds like you're anti-law. I can't answer your question. And then she reminded him that he's a public servant, to which he responded, I'm the master, ma'am, the master. So is that not infuriating? This is how your election.